Okay, Valo, what can you tell us about this? Yeah, so here, when it's uh, come to trading, it's uh, actually not that hard. So for example, as I said, in the start, you have to find your own strategy, uh, see when it's applicable, and then just to try to start implementing it. At the beginning, you'll find that uh, there are like uh, tons of uh, products and sectors that you can trade, but uh, you don't know which one is, uh, it's yours one actually. So first, you need to be uh, specialized. Whenever you develop your own strategy, you see where it works best. Try to uh, trading there for just, uh, let's say, a uh, certain period of time. And whenever you, when you have database of results and you see that it's profitable, you're going to say, okay, this is my sector. So I'm going here I'm going to trade. And most of my focus will be in this sector. Next comes, whoa. <laughs> she said next. So, yeah. so next is the patience. When you start uh, doing uh, your strategy, but uh, of course, in the market, nothing is perfect. So you have to wait for your time. Whenever you're uh, waiting to open a position, you don't have to be rushed in order, oh, I want to get into this position, I don't want to miss it. So you just need to be patient to see the exact opportunity, the exact moment, then to enter and to see uh, how it's going to develop and to implement the correct management for your position. Then it uh, comes the not to wait for the immediate results. When I started trading uh, professionally in uh, 2015, uh, I think there were like four or five months that uh, I wasn't profitable at all. I was uh, trying to evolve. I was trying to see what's wrong with my strategy. I was trying to find my sector. So it just takes time. So you have to, don't have to be like uh, after the first obstacle, obstacle to say, okay, this is not for me. Uh, it's causing me losses. You have to take time and to make a proper plan in order to follow it and to leave your strategy to develop. And whenever it's correct, the positive results will come. And then in the end, uh, whatever you do, don't be uh, over overcomplicated because uh, there's, as my colleague says, uh, a lot of information about trading. You can find everything everywhere but it's not applicable for every trade. Whenever you're trading, you have to see uh, what's going to work best for this particular position to implement it, and uh, then, of course, to see what's going to happen. Because if you're trying to put all of your knowledge into one position, you get confused. There's like uh, tons of indicators, tons of strategies that you want to, uh, that you can use, but in the end of the day, only one will work, and the other one will be just a uh, dead weight for you. And uh, now, it's, uh, it's my colleague. Okay. So uh, now I would like to speak a little bit about the organization and why organizing uh, your trading day and your trading sessions is a key moment for you to become profitable. Executing the trade is the easiest part. It's the end part. Uh, before executing, executing the trade, you need to know a lot more things and one of the most important things you need to know and uh, actually to be is to be organized you need to plan your trades you need to have trading plans each day and most importantly you need to follow them that's what organized means uh, so you need to create a habit for yourself uh, like for example getting up early checking the news uh, seeing if there is anything that can cause uh, some turbulence on the market, uh, if I can put it that way. Then check uh, all the markets you are willing to trade. Uh, decide how and which of them actually you want to trade on during the day. And then make your uh, technical analysis regarding which we are going to uh, speak more in depth in our next presentation, I think it was. Right, Pascal? Yeah, okay. So <laughs> uh, planning your day, planning your trades, uh, is very important and most important thing is following those plans because if you don't you will start making mistakes again I speak from experience and this will lead to substantial losses which uh, will basically wipe out uh, the profits you have accumulated with 
uh, on the days where you planned ahead, where you uh, organized yourself and organized uh, your trading sessions. Now, a few words regarding adapting your strategy. Uh, I won't go uh, too deep in that topic now because uh, that would mean to talk a little bit about different type of types of trends, fundamental analysis, and so on. But the main point is that uh, you have to adapt your strategy to the market conditions. Uh, and that is included in your, uh, when you're planning the trading day. So when you plan the trading day, you decide which strategy you want to implement uh, on the market today and how you want to take your trades and manage them. And as we said, you have to plan your trade and you have to trade your plan. And it's not like in life where it's super cool to don't be uh, too much organized, you know, like uh, uh, one life. No, in, in trading, uh, you need to be tac tac tac. And uh, about the psychology. So uh, the thing is that a lot of people, they have very bad relationship with a failure or with success. So people, they leave very bad the fact to, to lose or to fail, they take it against us. So if you're one of them, just forget about trading. So, so if you want to become a good trader, you have to work a lot on your own psychology and your personality. Actually, trading will teach you a lot about life. It will teach you humble, uh, hum humility and uh, to have good relationship with failure. So again, like each of your failures, it's a lesson. If you take a lesson from a failure, then it's just not a failure. Bad relationship with money. If you start to trade because you want to become rich, again, just do something else. Try to, I don't know, to scam people or trade crypto, make an ICO. But, but uh, <laughs> you do an ICO? Uh, no, no, but, 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 but if you trade for money, I mean, first, you, you have to trade because you like trading, because you like the idea of being independent or trading the market or, or whatever. So don't start trading because you want to become rich. And don't feel forced to succeed. I have a lot of people who come to me and say, okay, I have uh, been fired and I have one year of uh, unemployment fees, you know, like uh, when you don't work in France, I guess the same here. Uh, the country give you money. Uh, and a lot of people told me, okay, I have to succeed be, 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 before the end of the year because after I have no money and I have to go back to work. So it's impossible to succeed in trading if you have a deadline because it can take you 10 years. I, have, I know people who spend 10 years be, before to be successful. So don't put deadline, don't put pressure, just take it the way it is. It comes, it comes, it doesn't come, just wait and be patient. Uh, don't get too passionate. Trading is my passion maybe less than when I started. I started uh, 11 years ago and I was, I was 19. And I was uh, super crazy about it. I was, I, I was I actually, I have lost all my friends because of that, because I was speaking about trading every day, every day. And, you know, they didn't care. Uh, and it, it, it became a passion and it was very bad because trading can't be your passion. You can be passionate about it, but have other passion. Because it's very time consuming. You can end up to spend your whole day and your whole night reading, trying, testing, and this kind of thing. You can cut yourself from the world and finally you can end up to have bad results because you need to have a good uh, balance in your life. So don't love too much trading. Trading is a mean of making money. It's a mean of, uh, of working on something cool, financial markets, but it can't be your passion. The Graal doesn't exist. Again, I, it's what I told you before. If you look for uh, uh, the perfect strategy that will all make you rich, if you think that after those five weeks you're gonna be, whoa, super, I have learned a lot and now I can be independent and, and, and win, no. Again, we're gonna teach you basics, advanced basics that will way be enough to start trading and so on. But there is no Grail. No, it's Grail. Is Grail or Grail? I don't know, just Google uh, okay. underlines it. Uh, there is no Grail, Grail, there is no, it doesn't exist. And whoever tells you that, you know that it's a liar. So if you receive an advertisement of a guy telling you, hey, I, I know a method to win 98% of your trade, blah, 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 you know, that's bullshit. And if someone tells you that I'm winning 100% of my trade, it can be possible with luck, but it's not sustainable on the long term. So there is no graal. And actually, the hardest thing about trading is to accept that there is not such a perfect strategy. And uh, when you are saying that trading is easy, actually, it's super hard to understand that it's easy. Because most of the people, you know, they want to intellectual the thing and, and this kind of thing. Uh, and, oh, already? Okay, so we have yeah, finished we... with this introduction. Okay, now something a bit more concrete. 
the first part was to explain us a bit what is trading according to us and ha as you have seen it's a lot of psychology and state of mind and this kind of thing then to become a good trader uh, you need to be a psychopath it means that you have to have no emotion or at least you have to work on it uh, and you have to react in a way that is very different from other people so you know when you lose when you suffer you usually you said okay I have suffered so I shouldn't go there but in the trading it's the opposite so we used to say that good psychopaths are good trader you are a good uh, trader right so I won't answer that question now uh, and uh, also a good trader is uh, someone who has different personality actually to be a good trader it you have to have four different good aptitudes. First, you need to be a good strategist. So a strategist, uh, if we make an analogy with uh, the war, it's the general. So it's a person who knows, so he doesn't do, he knows how to attack uh, the Chinese because he knows the Chinese, he knows how they, they, they think and, how, and also he knows the field. So this is a strategy. A strategy knows which kind of strategy to use for which opponent. In the trading, it's the same. A good strategy, he knows every market condition. There is a lot of market condition, but you can know all of them. And for each market condition, there is one way to trade. Actually, there is several ways, but there is one way which is better than the other one. Less risky, less stressful, this kind of thing. Uh, then the strategy gives you uh, the overview of what you have to do where you have to enter, how you have to manage your trade, where you have to, to, to exit, and so on. So you have to be a good strategy. Then you have to be a good analyst, because uh, when you know that for each market condition there is one strategy to apply, it means that you need to know in which market we are now. So you need to have the ability to analyze the market and to recognize the market to know which strategy you have to apply. Then you have to be good in technique, because it's good to know what you have to do, so the strategy. It's good to know which markets uh, you have under your eyes, so it's an analysis. But now you need to, to, to exploit it, you need to trade. And to be a good trader, you, you need to be a good technical guy because you need to enter at the good time uh, and at the good place and to end, to, to find, to, to end your trade uh, also at the good time and the good place. So it, it requires timing. And then you need to be someone who can organize and manage itself, himself. So you, can man you have to manage your emotion, you have to manage your capital, and you have to manage your risk. So we're gonna go over those four different pillars. What is easy when uh, you work in a, in a fund or, or in a company, sometimes those people actually are different. Actually, most of the time they are different. So you have the strategist, usually the head. You have the analyst, uh, analyst actually, there is several analysts. You have some traders, and you have people who are managing everything. So it's quite easy because everybody has one thing to do. When you are a single trader, you have to be those four guys at the same time. And why it's complicated, it's because it doesn't require the same thing. So to know the strategy, to know uh, uh, which strategy goes to which market, it's easy. You just have to learn and to be logic. The analysis also, it's a lot of practices and knowledge. But to know how to trade and to master the technique, it's super complicated. It requires a lot of practice and a lot of uh, I mean, self-emotion, uh, I mean, self-management. And the risk management also is super complicated because, as Valo said, when you are winning, maybe you want to uh, trade more or to risk more. When you are losing, you want to get back your, to cover your losses. So it's super hard to master. So easy, complicated. And, uh, and that's all. And just to prove the point that uh, uh, it's super complicated, uh, we did some experience where we have people who were uh, uh, trading alone and they were losing. And then we asked to two or three traders to partner and to team up together. One trader was, was uh, sorry, one trader was uh, forced to uh, make the analysis. So his only role was, I'm analyzing the market. Then he was giving his analysis to the trader and he was telling him, okay, I have recognized this kind of market we have to implement this strategy, now it's your job to, to, to applicate uh, this strategy. So the trader responsibility was only to take trade according to what the analyst has taught him. This transfer of responsibility is very good because if the trader was losing, he was saying, it's not my fault, Me, I have just listened to what this guy has told me. And 
It was it okay? And and the analyst, uh, he was okay because he was not trading. So because he's not trading, he's not with the markets. So he doesn't have the emotion if he's losing or winning. So he can have uh, his brain, you know, totally totally cool. And uh, and after we had uh, people making the management of the trades, so they could say, oh, this guy is taking too much risk, or this guy uh, didn't close his trade in the good way. And we made we did this experiment with only loser. Okay, with uh, traders uh, who, are, who are losing. Uh, and it ended up that they won. For two months, they won. So it means that if you can't be a good trader, team up. Find the guys where you can work with, and you're going to see that you will succeed. Uh, I will start with the strategy. Ilian will explain the analysis, uh, value the technical, and we're going to end up with the management. We're going to go over uh, those topics quite fast because it's actually what we will explain in the uh, you know, coming, uh, next coming event. So a strategy, Tegel, you have to know that in every time you can do three things. Either you can buy, you can sell, or you can do nothing. So for example, when I'm here, or when I'm here, I'm here, I have those three possibilities. A strategy tells you what is the best to do, what is the less risky, what is the most profitable. Uh, then, as I said before, each market condition has a strategy which works better. So when you have market A, you should use strategy A, and that's all. Don't use strategy B. And as I said, the strategy explains you exactly what to do. So do you have to buy, do you have to sell, or do you have to do nothing? Then, the, even if you find the good strategy, you can't use the strategy the same way at every time. So as example, Again, we're going to tell you how to recognize that this is a down trend, so it's market going down. Here you have the beginning of the movement in the green area, and here you have the end of the movement in the red area. You can't trade the same way when you are here, or when you are here, or here, or here. So the strategy has to explain you how you trade the market, a movement, sorry, when you are at the beginning, when you think you are, because it's impossible to know if you are in the middle, so when you think that you are in the middle, or when you think that you are at the end. So there is a strategy to trade here and to be able to make money uh, there. Uh, here it's another kind of market, and there is a strategy which explains again how to trade this kind of market that is not uh, you know, moving a lot, uh, either if you are at the beginning or more close to the end, and so on and so on. So when you know which strategy uh, you have to apply, and when you know uh, how to apply your strategy if you are at the beginning, in the middle, or in the end of the movement. You have done your work as a strategy, and then you have to ask to your analyst, hey, this is a strategy that works, now please help me to find uh, those markets. So, uh, the role of the analyst in you, basically, because uh, if you're a sole trader, you don't have someone to analyze the market, you have to analyze it yourself. Uh, the first thing the analysts do is to qualify the market. So there are three different uh, subcategories to qualifying the market. Uh, context, behavior, and the chart. So the context is uh, connected to, uh, basically you probably heard it, the sentiment analysis. Uh, it is how all the other participants on the market feel uh, about reg uh, regarding a certain market. Uh, for example, if they are expecting uh, some change, political change in a country, or uh, they are expecting uh, some changes in the in economical state of a country, all those things, uh, we are going to talk about them more on the next presentations when we cover fundamental analysis. But all those things influence the market. And uh, the analyst, the analyst, I'm sorry, uh, has to tell the trader uh, what is the current context of the market? Basically, what uh, other people are doing on that market, why this market uh, is like that, and uh, what can happen uh, in the future with that market. The second thing is uh, the behavior. Uh, this is basically uh, how the market behaves uh, during certain events, or certain news, or even when there is nothing uh, out there. This is uh, strongly connected. As you can see, we have showed a uh, range uh, here on the right. 
I will need the pointer yet. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's, it's, uh, So uh, you can see that here we are showing a range. Uh, this range is on the Euro USD currency pair uh, from the like 12th to 14th of June this year. And uh, this range is happening uh, about a range. What is a range? It is when the market is moving flat. Uh, it doesn't have a certain direction. Uh, again, we're going to go in a more in-depth analysis of a range next time. But the idea is here is to show you how the market is behaving when it is expecting something. In this case, uh, the market is expecting uh, the European Central Bank to publish their report if they're going to raise uh, their interest rate. Uh, that happened on the 14th of June. Uh, we have on the next slide, we have the actual reaction of those news. Uh, and, but I want to go back here first to talk a little bit about the chart itself. So the analyst, analyst has to uh, determine the context on the market, determine the behavior, why a certain market is behaving in such way, and uh, then to do uh, a technical analysis, uh, actually a visual uh, representation of the context and behavior on the chart itself, uh, which he, after that, passes to uh, the trader who has to uh, open and manage uh, the trades. Now, uh, regarding mapping the chart, uh, this is connected to uh, what is uh, the market doing in a certain period of time. For example, here we have a certain price level that uh, the market, the price is stopping on top and a certain price level on the bottom where the market is stopping. So the ana analyst has to mark those levels for the traders. So uh, in this way, the trader knows uh, how to implement the strategy. Uh, which Pascal talked about, and what can he expect from the market uh, in order to either open a position or uh, protect his investments if, uh, as in this case, uh, he doesn't know where uh, the news will take the price. So it's better to stay off this market. I would prefer it uh, and to protect my capital. And here, uh, again, you can see this is the same range, and this is the reaction after the European Central Bank uh, posted their rate decision. You can see uh, how strong the move was, and if the trader had a good uh, qualification of the market and a good mapping from the analyst, he could have uh, taken advantage of this, or at least if he had any positions open, uh, for example, here at the bottom of the range, uh, if he had buy positions open, he would know to uh, close some of his positions in order to protect his investments and his capitals from that. Uh, now, I just want to show you, this is again an uptrend. You can see that we are using uh, those arrows um, that are showing uh, the beginning of a certain trend and uh, the end of it. And uh, the green area is the area where it is best to go and enter into a trade because uh, that area will give you uh, the highest chance for profits. Uh, it is a lot more riskier to enter somewhere here. And uh, my colleague Value will uh, tell you a bit more about uh, entry spot uh, different trading techniques and uh, how to adapt your strategy and how to react on different types of markets, basically. Yeah, so we are the traders. So we are actually the guys that are doing the magic. As you can see here, with all the collected information from the strategies and the analyst, we actually have to make the decision and to take the action. So first is the strategy. 
you see a chart, you know that already this is a range. We will talk about, about this in the future presentations as well. But let's say that you know that this is a range. So first, the thing, first thing you have to know is to recognize it and then to, um, to see for yourself which is going to be the best strategy to implement into this situation. Then comes the implementation. First, you can see you either can go and only buy here, here, and maybe here, and just wait for the price to reach the upper part of this range and to collect your profit. You can go another way. You can go, we call it short, but basically you sell the position. So you can enter here, here as well, here. And you can just wait for the price to reach the bottom part of the range and to collect your profit there. Then it's the actual action. You decide either you use both of the strategies, so you go both ways, or for your in, if your opinion is that probably this range will be ending soon, you just can uh, take action, for example, only in this case to buy, because you expect for the price to continue going in an uptrend. Then it comes the role of the trader. Whenever you decided to enter into a position, you have to know that your first and maybe most important role is to maximize the profit and to minimize the loss. So basically, what you have to do is to find the perfect spot to enter into a position and then to follow your plan. So in this case, again, you recognize this is a downward sloping range, basically the price is going down. You, you either can enter into the beginning or if you want to wait for a confirmation for the price to see that you're sure it, uh, the price is going to go down, you can wait a little bit and then your perfect spot will be to enter whenever the, the price is making a correction going up and then just to try to enter going short from the bottom of every movement. Uh, sorry, from the top of every movement. So what's, everything, uh, what's uh, other thing very important is to follow the money. You don't have to trade everything. You just have to trade whatever or uh, basically what you find there is an action in. Sometimes the markets are very calm and uh, you, don't, you cannot extract money from them. So you have to find when there is action and then to make your positions there. And in the end, you have to adjust your strategy. That means that uh, nevertheless, even if you're doing everything correctly, sometimes the markets are behaving odd, so you might losing money. So if you see that your strategy that you're implementing is not performing well, you have to take the decision to shrink and to wait to see what's wrong, and then again to evolve and to uh, make your explosion bigger. And uh, on the other way again, if you go and win a lot of money, this is the time you, can, you should actually push and to make most of your profit.